welcome our pastor, Bishop Dag Hewan Mills. Today is your day. This is your moment. This is your time. God is moving in your life. God has a word for you. Give God praise. Hallelujah. Father, which art in heaven, we are super excited to be here today. Bless us, heal us, and touch our lives. We give you praise and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Today I want to uh, begin to share with you a short message called Likely to be rich or likely to be poor. Likely to be rich or likely to be Amen. Likely to be rich or likely to be poor. Now, the church, one of the strong messages we have is the message of giving. Luke 6.38, give and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. Give into your bosom. For with the same measure, right, that you meet withal, it shall be measured to you again. Are you listening? Now, one of the things that I see is that we emphasize the giving part. Because really, that is the supernatural part which God has to engineer. Amen. If you look at Luke 6, 38, it says, Give, it shall be given to you. Good measure, president shaking together. Shall men give into your bosom? Okay. Now, any of you can volunteer Let's say um, Iman Obedin has been suggested as a volunteer, right? Now, is there anybody here to whom it has occurred to give him 20 CDs? You are sitting by him, has it occurred to you, 20 CDs? How about 30, 40? Okay, let's make it 100 CDs. Turn around so they see how handsome you are. Does, has it occurred to anybody to give him 50 CDs or $100? Wow. Now, that means that Luke 638 is activating something very strange. That men, 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 should occur to men, men in the world. I mean, it has to occur to them before they will give to you. And he's not talking about giving to the church or giving to pastors. It's about men giving to you. So it takes and has to take something supernatural for it to occur to people to give to you anything. It's a very, very supernatural thing. Yeah. And, I mean, you can try it. You can be a pastor and it will never occur to anybody. People think, oh, you are a pastor, people will bring you gifts. <laughs> I've, been a, I've been a pastor for so many years. 
And there are times, sometimes I, I, I've seen that pastors have been to their homes, you know, and uh, I remember one time I visited a pastor, and uh, actually I didn't visit him, I, I met with him, and then when we, we had uh, lunch or dinner or whatever, and when we came out, he said, oh, this is a car. I said, what car is this? A Mercedes Benz, the latest type of uh, the flat one. I don't know what it's called. But I know that Mercedes is the, supposed to be the best car. I don't know if it's true. But. So, he said to me, a lady who visited, visited him and whom he visited also, not really visited her, but was associated with her, went to where she was. She said to him that it has occurred to me to buy a car for you. Wow. Yes. So, she said she is buying the latest Mercedes Benz for him. Then he said, for your wife, I want to buy the latest, she said, not the latest, but go to where they sell Mercedes Benzes. And then your wife, she should choose any, any car that she sees in the shop. Yes. Say thank you, Jesus. Yeah. No, the pastor was telling me, he said, he, he told me, he said, look, I want, to, I want to just share this testimony with you. Yeah. So, and she told her, don't be worried. I say, Choose any car here. There's a brand new car. Any car that you see here. So she was forced to choose because I don't think she wanted to choose. She said, Which one is that? Okay, this one it was a four wheel drive, the biggest, nicest. <laughs> what was she choose? So she chose it. She said, The woman said, Beautiful. Then the woman said, You don't know me. You don't know who I am. When I met you, you didn't know. But he said, I see what you are doing and I feel I should, although it's not that something you can use for the work, but I, I, this is what I feel like. So she bought, and now the cars, not that the cars were there, oh, the cars were here. She bought it, paid the duty, shipped it, paid the duty, everything. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say is that you may be, and so there are times that it has occurred to me, then I say, somebody says, a prophet, he has has been brought to him the latest of this the latest of this the latest of this. in my ministry since I've been a pastor I have not yet met people who it has occurred to them to buy such cars for me Emmanuel too just me and him are the same way. yeah I don't know if you understand what I'm saying I'm not that I'm not in the ministry But I, I don't have, I don't, I, don't, I don't wake up in the morning and then there's different kinds. I have not, I've not experienced it. What I say is that, it's not, don't assume, because that is the way people assume. So, oh, if you are a pastor, you know, people will give, or if you are a politician, then people will give. There are politicians who are, don't have anything. So, God says, give, and it shall be given unto you. Is telling you that uh, the activation of miraculous giving and receiving is by giving. And that is why we emphasize giving. And that is why it's important for a Christian that without giving, it's not possible to enter into the supernatural giving and receiving realm which um, we are supposed to enjoy yes maybe i haven't given certain things i don't know that i have not people to come and pack cars in my house after after when i want i'm going to sit down and think about it yeah but what i'm trying to say is that it doesn't occur to people not before even giving and even sometimes it may occur to them to give to you but 
a certain amount will not occur to them. A smaller amount may occur to them. (laughs) But Jesus is showing us in this scripture that to initiate a realm of prosperity which is beyond the of your life, okay, you must enter into giving like tithing and giving of all there is no church with a high level of prosperity that doesn't operate in a lot of giving and receiving Bishop Oedipo for instance he will tell you there's nothing like prosperity without tithing he said there's nothing like prosperity without tithing you will tithe. Otherwise, there's nothing. You never enter to such things. So, prosperity, I'm talking about, what does I say is the topic? Likely to be rich, or likely to be poor. Likely to be rich, or likely to be poor. So, Giving, I, I don't want to downplay giving because I'm not giving. saying this at the beginning so that you don't understand giving. Don't and remain. Yes. Many years ago, when we did not have any church building, you see, we were faced a crisis because at the medical school canteen and the medical school decided that they don't want to have a church in the canteen anymore. We were meeting there on their blind side. Do you understand? That means that they didn't know we came there. But we, after some time they realized that we were a main church there. So they said no. Minister of Health or somebody visited Kolebu and then they saw our chairs that have been packed by the surgical and they said, no, 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 what is this? Remove the chair. Well, we had a lot of benches packed outside the, and packed outside the surgical block. It, was, it belonged to us. We use it for church every Sunday. So, no, 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 away. So that started seriously try to leave the canteen to find a place. And the place we about three, four, five hundred meters from where we were. Three, four, five hundred, you are very humble. Three, four, five hundred meters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it was maybe not more than a kilometer away, and it was being sold to 37 million CDs. Something like that. 37 million old, old time million CDs. Which was one dollar was, I think, 320 one dollar was 370. So when you do the calculation, it was what? $100,000. And our church had in the bank the equivalent of $700. Are you with me? And we didn't take off Tuesdays. We didn't take, we hardly took off on Sunday. We didn't take tithes. We, no, we didn't, we didn't have any idea. So a brother, I'm talking to you about supernatural money. You are entering into supernatural money from today. A brother said to me, you are not serious about offerings. There is a way to take it. So he described to me how to take it. He said, if you don't take it that way, you will not be able to not, not do well. And I was ready because I was desperate. So, 
listen to him. So he said he would come to the church and uh, help us. So he did. He came. I always, I'm always in life. So we started to take offering more seriously. Then we decided to have a major fundraising to get the 370 or 390 million CDs that we needed. Or those 37 million, 39 million, whatever. Well, somebody injured in 1990, uh, 1991, exchange rate, Ghana exchange rate, US dollar. One, how much? Was it 35 or 36? Yeah. Now, the father says you should check the resume, you should send WhatsApp to people, check messages, browse the internet. When I'm preaching and you browse the internet or you check WhatsApps during my preaching, your phone will develop problems within the next three weeks. So, in the church, uh-huh. don't do don't, that because I, I, know, I need your phone to work. Well, have you checked it? How much is it? You can't find it. Okay. Look at me. Don't look at your... Hello? 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 Okay. Now, that day we raised the funds. Big time. We were at the canteen. The stage was like this. When you go, you fall over. All the money came in. Hey! And I was feeling sorry for the people. Because I was saying that these my people, they don't have anything. But people kept for one person kept a thousand. This one, two hundred. Hey! What will happen to them? They, they will die after giving this money. <laughs> but you see, truly, at that time, people didn't have anything. But as the church moved on, now, after giving, Everything seemed to change in the church. When you make people give, it changes. Uh, People prosper more, more than people when you have a church where they don't give. Anyway, we made a model. That's how come I know the price of a model. When an architect is going to make you a model of a building, you'll be shocked at how much it's going to so we made a model of the proposed Collegono Cathedral. This was my effort as a pastor in 1991. How long ago is that? 30 years ago, yes. So that day, people, I particularly remember a, a young girl, she stepped forward to give 500,000. I'm very sorry for her. I said, no, she's poor from today. You know what you have faith and then what you think is sometimes they are different. I felt for us. I believe in my heart. But anyway, him and others came. Now finally, we just decided to bless. We're closing. And the model was on my side like this. And then let us pray. Father, thank you for what you have done today. All these offerings have given. Thank you Jesus. Then suddenly I heard the Holy Spirit the money you have received eh? the money that has come, the fundraising 37 million cities all the money that you have received give all to the pastor who is standing, standing on this side with me I should give everything to the pastor. I said, what are you talking about? (laughs) 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 And then I heard the Holy Spirit whispering to my heart. He said that throughout this project, I wasn't happy at all. You know, usually on Sunday, when the church is over, there will be offering to count. That day, there was nothing to count because I was forced to obey. And I just gave it to him. And he was also not happy with with what I was doing. 
I said, please, don't argue in case you die. Just take my offering and go away. <laughs> do you know that that is what God was trying to do to take into supernatural giving and receiving? This Luke 638. To, 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 to try it. To enter. This type of testimony, they are easy to say when it's in the past. But it's not easy to say when it's going on. <laughs> yes. And truly, from that time, eh, first of all, to pay, the people who were buying from were Lebanese. And they, money on the left, building on the right. And we had no discussion about anything else. So I knew them. They were family friends also. They said, money on the left, burden on the right. So we raised and raised and raised. But I managed to get them and said, look, give us a schedule. By this time we'll pay this. 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 And by the grace, grace, we were able to pay everything. Everton. Paid everything. And not only that, but we were able to start the construction because it was a whole dilapidated, it was a ruin. Ruin. Check the word ruin. We've checked it before. Let's check it again. It was a ruin. We were just buying bitches. A ruin. A ruin. Aha, uh-huh, this one is the second one. Your life, which was like this, has been. This is a symbol of life is going. To it says that which is done and become worthless from injury and decay. Yes. So the whole thing was bizarre, a spoiled place. No toilets, no nothing, nothing, nothing. So anyway, by the grace, I said by the grace, by the grace. we were pay. Build, we never stop building. Up to today, we've never stopped building. Up to today, we've never stopped building. Yeah. We've been building and building and building and building. We've never lacked. Yes, what a blessing. And in 1998, the government came to break that we had built. Do you see? Yes, we moved into the building in 1998. We, we started paying in 1998. 91 and we paid to 1990. So by 1992, October, we started having meetings. 1993, good uh, Easter Sunday, we marched and moved in 1993. When the government came and broke down the walls and everything in 1998, and that day they broke it down, somebody took us to um, what do you call it? Kodesh. The Kodesh and showed us the building. Another Lebanese man, uh, his own was $1.5 million. This one was 100000 So that we were jumping. Because he's taking us from victory to victory. So the trouble led us to something else. And we also didn't have any money to pay for this. Do you get it? We didn't have any branches, by the way. Our first, well, we, by that time we had branch, but our first branch was in October 1992, Geneva. Yes. So we've never lacked money, and you also never lack money when the Holy Spirit leads you to give. Eh? Give. Give. When God leads you to give, give. But remember, if you are a Christian, the Holy Spirit will lead you to give. Because a giving is what Jesus said, give. And this will be the result. It will start a chain reaction of receiving. And if you keep your eyes open, now I can't say that I can see anybody who sometimes where you think you will receive from, that is not how it comes to you. Oh, yes. That's not how. Even the fact that the, the people agreed that we should pay in installments. 
That one was a miracle. Then they even agreed that we can start, we can enter and start working on the place because we were under pressure. Whilst we hadn't finished paying, and they believed, but we, they, they gave us the date, pay this by this date, pay this by this. So it was almost one and a half years to pay. And by the time the last day came, we, we, we were able to pay. Yeah. So even that is a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a provision. Yes. God brings and makes it possible. So what I'm saying to you is that never discount the importance of giving. Yes, in your Christian life. You, you will be led to give. I, I promise you, you will be led by God to give. If you are born again, not, not necessarily to the church, to this church, or to me, or to anybody, but giving, just the fact of giving, the Holy Spirit will lead you. If you are a Christian, you will give. Yeah, he will lead you and he will say, give. Give to this. Give to this. There was a time the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, when someone comes to preach, never give the person less than this amount. Supernaturally, every time I went to preach, every time somebody gave me an offering, it was always less, a small fraction of the amount that the Holy Spirit told me. Don't, don't always honor my servants at least with this. So I started to do that. Then as though they have been received an instruction, other people who I don't know, and now nobody knows what I give. You don't know what I give or what we give. Other people, as though they have been told, multiplied whatever they were giving to me by many, many times more. Yeah. I started to actually experience what I was doing. Amazing. So it's, it's supernatural, but I don't want to, you know, money is very supernatural in its way that it behaves. It's not, it's not, it's not just... I mean, working hard, that brings money. No, giving is very important. So everybody in the church must learn it. Learn to give. And you give where God leads you to give. And you give, you give your tithes to your, to, to, your, to your church. You sow seeds where God, the Holy Spirit, leads you to. Because it is the fulfillment of Luke 6.38. These are the words of the Son of God who came down from heaven, the same person who said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that you believe in your salvation, said these words, give and it shall be given to you, good measure. He said, whoever has seen me has seen the father. If you've seen me, you have seen God. And I'm saying to you, I've come down from heaven and I'm telling you that give, it shall be given to you, good measure. Press down, shake it. It's a miraculous and supernatural thing. That's why even poor people have to give. Even people who don't have anything should also give. And that's why you learn it spiritually. And that is why we also don't accept, sometimes we have pastors who have a good congregation, but they don't have money in the church. It is usually the pastor's fault. Just like it was my fault that there wasn't enough money because I didn't know how to take the offering. And we have found out that when a church doesn't have enough money, it it is from the pastor. When we started to give to support from the, what do you call it, uh, the prisoners, the money we give for the prisoners, the, the money from here, which is children, it, it's more than even the Kodesh that we give to prisoners. What we, what we, how we feed them, you know, we feed them at, at different times of the year. We buy Coke, we buy KFC and all those things for them. We are getting more from, the, from here than even from where the millionaires are. You'll be surprised, children millionaires, in Jesus' name. Child millionaires. Amen. So expect great blessings from God by becoming a giver. Yes, believe in giving. Believe in giving money, giving lands, giving cars, giving houses, giving anything that the Holy Spirit Sometimes you should even see it as a challenge. No, I've never given a, a car before. I've not given any car anywhere before. I've not given a house before. I've not given a land before. I've not done this before. I've not done certain things before. You know? Yes, yes just I think it was just yesterday, a brother was sharing. He said he's a member of Pentecost. 
you know, and he was saying the things that a certain a man has done for, the, for them, for their church. You know, you just give, so take this radio station, pay for this, pay, pay this, take this to the church. Many things that they have done for the church of Pentecost. Many things in churches are done by people who got touches and say, I will give this, I will give this. One time I was driving in Usu and I stopped by a building and then it, I saw a plaque on a building. It was being used for, I don't want to mention what it was, but it was donated to the Methodist church by Mr. So-and-so. Yeah, the whole building. Yeah. And I think, I'm sure the man is dead, but he, he gave it to the, to the church. So, let God, let, let God, no matter who you are, no matter what you are, learn to give. You see, God will show you. And just like the day that he told me to do that, he was starting he was starting something supernatural. And it was one of the difficult things for, for me personally to do. Because we really were counting the pennies. Hallelujah. All right. So likely to be rich is a giver. Number one. Likely to be rich is somebody who gives. Amen. Number two. Likely to be rich is a diligent person likely to be rich. For that, I think you are likely to be rich. Now, what is a diligent person? A diligent, I think you should better bring up the definition of diligence. A persistent and relentless effort by an individual. All right? Diligence, well, if you are diligent, that means you are persistent and relentless in trying to solve things or overcome things or fight things or do things. You are persistent and relentless. You are likely to be a rich person. How many want to fall into the likely to be rich category? Wow. What about the likely to be poor? God forbid. Yes. Now, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 4. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse number 4. It says, He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand. Hmm. But the hand of the diligent maketh rich. Amen. The hand of what? The diligent. Amen. So, diligence is likely to make you rich. Just continuing on one thing. Continuing. Continuing, persisting, persisting, continuing, hard continuing. So, lazy people will relax and say, what is there that I cannot endure? The lights are off. Well, it's okay. Morning will come and there will be daylight. But hard work, persisting, continuing in the same thing. You are likely to be a rich person. You are likely to be a rich person. You are likely to be a rich person. Yeah. You are likely to be rich. Whether it's in the ministry, whether it is in business, whether it is in school, whether it is at work, whether you are the head or whether you are the leader, whether you are a man or whether you are a woman, whether you are seen or not seen, you are likely to be rich if you are diligent. According to the Bible, you are likely to be rich. A diligent the diligent hand makes a person rich. 
What is the meaning of diligent? What is the meaning of diligent? Constant in effort to accomplish something. Constant in effort to accomplish. Attentive and what? Persistent. Where is this man? Attentive and persistent in anything. Done or pursued with persevering attention. Yes. Painstaking. Huh? Pursued. Now, no matter the area of work, if you have this particular quality, you are likely to be rich. Because what is my area of work? Is it medicine? No. Is it business? No, I don't do business at all. At all. I don't sell anything, including books. Now, give all, all, all of you should have all my books. There are 73. If you don't have it, there's something wrong with you. Yes, because I, I'm giving all. It's not selling things that will make you rich. Yes. Persistent. What, what is the meaning of the word? Put it back. Constant in effort to accomplish something. Constant. On, in anything, anything. Choose, choose, choose. Cooking, catering, catering, ministry, prayer. You are, you are physics, teaching. No, read it. And we are talking about likely to be rich among the children here. I'll tell you that perhaps you do not see many diligent people, even in the ministry. Yeah. When you get into people's life, you realize that everybody is relaxed. Yeah. But when you see somebody who is diligent, you see that he's, consist- he's still making an effort. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Whatever the area, lecturing, academic, whatever area of, your, of life, constantly working. A diligent person is constantly working. Hard working. When I met my father-in-law, hard, persistently working. Yes. Before he died, he told me, I want to tell you how I became a millionaire. Yes. How I became a millionaire. Now, my father died, my biological father died earlier. I didn't know how, how much he worked, but I know that he worked hard. Yeah. Hard. He's a lawyer. And many other things. You know, some of us, the, the course that you got in school, I don't want to mention the course, but the course that you got in school, it reflects your diligence at a certain stage of your life. True or not true? Many times, it's after you've been in school for some time, you realize the importance of hard, persistent work. But by then, you've already passed the stage where you can choose a course for the school. Huh? Yes. Sometimes you realize it during national service. (laughs) Do you know why? Because, you see, there is a curse in this world. No matter how, no, no matter the area of work, Before the ground yields, it's like saying that we're going to water this carpet for flowers to grow here. Before flowers will grow from this carpet, and it's possible, I mean, you're going to have to apply a lot of effort and thinking to make something green come out of this carpet. We have to water it, put some soil there, put some moss or some kind of thing that grows without going deep. 
and be on it and be on it and get some light and something. Eventually, something. That is how this world is. The world is like growing flowers from a carpet. It's like growing flowers from snow. Yes, very hard. If it's not, if you don't apply constant hard work, you're not likely to yield anything. One day, one of my pastors, you know, in the, I think, 1999 or 1998, he went to, I think it was Takwa, and he went to preach there. He went to stay in a hotel, I think, 98 or 99, the year before President Kufo became the president. And he met President Kufo in that hotel. Yeah, he was on a campaign. I mean, quiet campaign. And he told me, he said, hey, the politicians, they really suffer. They work hard. They work very hard. Oh, they do. To be a president, by the time you see that you almost, your juices are almost finished. It's true. You win elections, you lose this one, you win, you lose, you are rejected, disappointment, you come, go, come. I mean, unless you are relentless. That's why usually they take you based on how much you have tried and lost in the past. You are chosen often with that sympathy that, oh, this is your fourth time, eh? Okay, come, eh? You can have your, it's your turn now. But if, they, if, if, if you are not seen to have really suffered, and it's like, oh, this, but this is just your first time you're coming. This one, to chop here, you have to really suffer. And wait for your turn. Yeah. They'll tell you, young man, wait for your turn. You don't come here just like that. Yeah. That's why you see presidents become older and older. Any work, if you don't persist, so you may give. But then if you don't apply the principle of diligence, that is constantly working. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Many times when I wake up, I'm not so sure where I, where I, where I am, where, where we are traveling. I don't know where we are. So, so I, I, you, you, you see, you will, you, will not, you will be surprised that a time comes where you will turn to your assistant or administrator or secretary and ask what is happening today before you will be informed that you are preaching today. You are what? Preaching today. At where? At what time? They say, you are preaching at 2 o'clock and at 7 o'clock. Really? Who are those coming for the preaching? But you see, earlier you will be waiting on God and praying for years for that day to come. But the time comes where you, you, you are so continuous and persistent, I don't even know what you are doing. Oh, yes. 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 So, diligence. One very diligent, hard worker. Is Bishop David Oyedepo. Oh, yes. I mean, when he describes his hours and the work that he's doing and the services that he's preaching at to hundreds of thousands constantly. I mean, it's only when you go close to people that you realize, well, is it anointing or is it hard work? Yeah. Very hard. Very hard. Number two, what's the topic, today's topic? Or likely to be poor. Now, the second reason why diligence is likely to be rich, a diligent person is likely to be rich, is because diligent people often become leaders. Yeah. Proverbs chapter 12. And verse 24. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. Mercy. Yes. 
Now, notice, the hand of the diligent shall what? Bear rule. Usually, where you earn leadership by merit, not just by family connections, do you see? It's usually hard work that will make you a leader. And usually leaders end up being more rewarded than those under the leader. Yeah. The leader, I'm sure the president is paid more than the parliamentarians. Yes. Yes. Some people just, just became me- members of parliament just this year. The president has been a member of parliament before, hasn't he? Yes. He's been a member of parliament and a minister. Minister of Foreign Affairs, Minister of um, Justice. And I've, I've been Attorney General before. So you are just come, you are a mem- uh, member of Parliament of uh, Atlantic Ocean East. And you want to earn the same amount as someone who has been constantly on it. Eh? No, no, no. Not going to be the same at all. And he says that a constantly hard-working person is likely to be made a leader. Yes. You know, where those things matter, those people become important. In my world, hard, constant working matters. And hard, constantly working people are higher to me in my mind. And in the, in the system. Yeah. You know, there are people who be, become leaders because of Imba BHA, which means I came a long time ago. Yes. Wonderful pastors, all of you sitting in the front and at the back and wherever you are seated. Hard, constant working is what really makes you a real pastor. Oh, yes. And that's likely. The leader, a ruler, is likely to be rich. Yes, likely. A king, a president, a head, even our members of parliament. Hard campaigning. Hard. It's, it's quite hard to, be, to, to win elections now. A lot of places are 50-50. The whole country is divided 50-50-50. Some places that is... We know that, oh yeah, that one, you'll get 60%, 70%, some even 90%. Hard working makes you a leader. You will become a leader in, in any field from hard work, persistent, constant, constant, constant work, why? Because most people are not like that. So you start to show up. You start. To, you can even be a girl. Your hard work will start showing through. Not speeches. Not speeches. Hard work. If you don't want to work hard, you shouldn't be close to me. Sometimes I feel sorry for the people around me. That they are tired. I mean, I can see that they are tired. I said, if you follow me, you'll be tired. Yeah. So, hard, constant working. Constantly on the church. On the church. You'll become a leader in the body of Christ. I've become a leader in the body of Christ. I'm a leader in the body of Christ. I'm one of the leaders in the body of Christ. And the body of Christ, they don't give appointments. Have you heard of the body of Christ giving appointments to anybody? No. I become a leader in the body of Christ. Yeah. I mean, one time they were forming a, a fellowship of some pastors. And they, they, they invited me, just about a few pastors in, in Ghana. Then they invited, I mean, the pastors who were forming it invited me out of a few people, less than 20. They invited me to, to be part of them. So it means I'm a leader in the body of Christ because that group was only leaders in the body of Christ. Are you there or you are not going to stay? So hard 
Hard work makes you, really, really, really makes you a real leader. Not an appointed appointee. Those of you sitting here are appointed. But are you really a ruler and a leader? It says the hand of the diligent shall bear rule. You start ruling. It's just a matter of time. So likely to be rich there, diligent. Likely to be rich. The third reason why diligence is likely to be rich is because diligent people think of more and non-diligent people think it's okay. <laughs> you know, hard-working, diligent people, they want more. They want to do more. They want to go further. Hard. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Proverbs 21, verse 5. The thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenteousness. A, a, a diligent person, when he's thinking, do you see? He's thinking of more, plenty more. When I'm thinking of Swollen Sunday, I'm thinking of status tegidus, which is more than Swollen Sunday. When you think of Sunday, I'm thinking of sw- swelling the Sunday. When you are happy with Swollen Sunday, I'm not happy with Swollen Sunday. I want to do more. When I see 5,000, I want to see 25,000. It's usually a diligent person's thoughts. Look at the scripture. His thoughts. The thoughts. The thinking. The mind. Whereas a person who is not diligent, oh, we have arrived. Oh, we are there. Oh, by the grace, we have arrived. No, no. We are heading towards almost 40 million books. The thoughts of the Dillian want more because my father, Kenneth Hagin, had about 65 million books by the time he went out of this world. You, see, you hear that we have three or four thousand churches. Ah, a thought of a diligent wants twelve thousand churches. You, I see what Pentecost has, this has, whatever. I say, wow, this is what I want to be like Pentecost. We are having a crusade at uh, one town here, and I asked the pastor, who is the crusade director, so do, do we have a church there? He said, we have a church, one church. And he said, oh, but Pentecost, they have about eight or 12 churches with buildings in that one town. Yes. So when I look, I say, no, no, no. We are not, we are not there. We are not there. A diligent person, this, the mind is immediately thinking of more. If you meet a diligent person, he's sitting down quietly, he's thinking of more. Not more money, don't think of more money. But you see, all those things eventually lead you to more. And it it leads you to more money somehow, mysteriously. Hard working. More. How I can do more. How I can fulfill my ministry. How I can finish what I've started. How I can serve the Lord better. You will definitely become a leader. As against those who are always thinking of, how can I leave early? How can I run away? How can I do so that the man doesn't see? A by A, what are you doing? You always have something hiding, something hidden, something secret, something that you don't want him to see or to know. It shows something. As against somebody who wants to do even more. I have some people who help me and some of the people who help me want to help me more than they are helping me. So what can I do to help you more? How can I do it? What can I do that will help? I have people like that. I have people like that. 
Oh, is there something like that? And I also have people who are always hiding. <laughs> you know, one day I was at a program and one of my pastors came to give an offering. And when I saw him, I said, oh, this man has just come to mark register. He, because I'm standing there and I'm giving there, he wants me to see him that he's come for the program. I knew immediately. He wants me to see that he's come for the program. But he's not actually coming for the program. He wants me to see that he's come for the program. So, ah, here I am. I'm taking envelope. I said, oh, look at it. Look at it. Look at it. After some time, you see those fake ones. No. Many of us, are not, our thoughts are not tending towards plenteousness. Our, our thoughts are tending towards how can I rest? How can I live without being seen? How can I live early? How can I live early? How can I live without being seen? How can I do something else that I really want to do apart from this one that we are all being forced to be here to do? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. When is vacation? When are we on holiday? How can I get away? You know, either you are not in your life's work or you are lazy. Yes. Your diligence must start when you are young. You know, one time I heard Bishop Bredepo say he saw an elderly man um, serving. You know, the Bible says that we must bear our yoke in the youth. And he said he saw an elderly man on a plane serving tea or something. He was saying this man didn't bear his yoke in the youth. That's why he's doing this work at this time. Your diligence must begin as the young person. So, oh, how can I do? They will see that I'm not around. So I'm going to do this and that. Then you, and you become full of tricks, full of lies, full of deception. You always have something that you are cleverly doing. So the day that you are found out, when you are found out, you fall from a high place down. The hand of the diligent is always thinking more, 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 more. Oh, yes. I met with uh, pastors. We had a conference last week. I said, like, you say we are a church. We have churches in Nigeria, we with buildings. I said, where's my, my Nigerian bishop? I don't have any Nigerian bishop. I don't have any Togolese bishop. They are also in controlling Togo. Why is a Togolese bishop? I mean, I don't see the advancement in the church without a Togolese bishop or a, ben- a Beninois bishop. Honestly. Or not even seven Togolese bishops. I need seven Togolese bi- I need seven Togolese who, who, when they come, you say, oh, these are bishops from Togo. And when they open their mouth, they start. Je suis à la vie de And so they don't, they, they are not Ghanaians. They don't understand English, whatever. They are Togolese. It, it's a higher way of thinking and the, the hand of the diligence is always thinking of something more than what you are you are doing yeah yeah if i introduce kenyans so these are kenyan kenyan bishops there are about 15 of them 13 to 15 of them so they've come so, are they Ghanaians? they are not Ghanaians. they are kenyans one is in this town one is in this town one is in this town so they, they've come i mean they are visiting Ghana. I said, oh, wow. It means the church is army of another order. Yeah. It's, it's far more than what we are. What we are. So the, the, the thoughts of the diligence. Look at that scripture. The thinking of the diligence. It's not, oh, how many churches have a, a church in, in Kenya? How many charismatic churches have branches in Mombasa? And so that is not how I'm thinking. I'm thinking of how can I say that it's a real church when I don't have Kenyans as bishops? Like there's a number of them and they're all part of the same family. Oh. And then if the Kenyans come and add, I'll be thinking, I need my Thailand bishop. By that time, the Kenyan bishop, my Thai, Thai, Thai bishops. Yes, the Thailand bishops, I don't see their show. 
They haven't come for the programs. Oh, they're all here. It's the Sri Lankan bishops that are here today, but the Thai, the Thai, the Thai ones are not here. Wow. And then my Japanese pastors. Oh, yes. If I'm able to break through to have Japanese pastors, it's a very high, it's far higher than today saying somebody can speak Japanese because he went to do one year masters in Japan and he can speak Japanese, so he's going to Japan. It's not the same. You see, the thoughts of a diligent person are always thinking of more. Most of our rice and chicken sellers are not thinking of how to make more. But the KFC people, eh, they have thought of how to spread it. And it's not that the KF- KFC is the nicest chicken, but it's always usually the same. Which is a special achievement to make food the same. Few ladies can cook food the same. Today is nice. Tomorrow... It's, it's tasting like cardboard. <laughs> huh? Today it's working. Tomorrow it's like we need to add some vinegar or something to the food to change it. Are you listening? Yeah. Now, these KFC people, all these years they've never been in Ghana, but I'm sure the number of KFCs in America, the place is full of KFC. So the hand of the diligent tends for more. So they are looking for more places to sell it. That's why there's one near the church. I'm sure they have been enjoying our custom. There's everywhere. I was in, I went to uh, Bechem Drobo uh, Tepa. And I was driving through Sunyani. I saw KFC. I said, yes, they are here. (laughs) But you are happy with, and you see, they have Ghanaians running KFC. They've been able to take it there and make it work there. When I see all my Brazilians, Brazilian bishops, Bolivian bishops, pastors, and I'll know that. So when I think of all this, how can I rest and say, clap for that keyword mills? Oh, Obomodin. Obomodin is what? You have done what, what well? The thoughts won't allow you to rest. The thoughts won't allow you to rest. Thoughts won't allow you because the thoughts are tending to plenteousness. Now, when my Japanese bishops come to visit one day, and then they all come, check my kind of do you think maybe they may one day bring a Toyota to visit me with the Toyota? They say, oh, they are shipping a special Toyota to come. Uh, or Lexus. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And you may then be jealous. But you see, you don't know how the diligent man's always thinking of more. Not always thinking of, how can I escape? How can I get home early? How can I rest? How can I avoid the work? How can I? How can I organize food in the house without my husband knowing that I bought the rice and stew from the area? How can I? I want to throw away the takeaway packs very quickly and then I'll add something to the food and put some pepper, something, and mix it in a way and then present it. And then he will not know. Until the day that he finds out. I know somebody who found out. Say, ah! And so why it is a rice and stew from the area. That's why your chicken is not nice. Because, you know, you bite the chicken. And you see that the chicken 
what you are tasting inside is the water, the deep freezer water that was used to freeze the chicken. It's what you are tasting. It's only the top. Hmm? One day, you know, some husbands don't, some, I don't know whether it's husbands, but some husbands don't eat like cold food. They want it hot. So one day, the wife brought the rice and stew. But I think the rice was cold or the stew was cold. So she presented it. And the husband said, I don't like it. And she said, no, the stew will heat the rice. The stew will do what? It will heat the rice. <laughs> how, how, I mean, how, how is the stew going to heat the rice? And it became an argument. He said, the stew will heat the rice. See, those who are not diligent, they are diligent to get a man. Now, you should see how they behave when they are to be married. Oh, so sweet. The faith is the face is smooth like milk, condensed milk. <laughs> condensed milk, smooth. <laughs> Very diligent. <laughs> When they want to have a child, very diligent, sexually diligent. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. But after, it's over. And what they need, they have it. And you see that the constant effort is gone. One, one man I met him, he's an unbeliever. He said, oh, the average Ghanaian, well, that was his statement. I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it. He said it. So the average Ghanaian woman switches off after she's married and has a child. She switches off. She has a switch on, off, and she switch off. After she has got what she needed. Yes. Oh, now they're beautiful in church. But Charlie, there is an off switch there. The thoughts of plenty towards plenteousness. I want to do more. I want to make my husband happy. I want to, I mean, have sex to the level of the moon. <laughs> it's, a, it's a joke. It's a joke. That thought will not come. Then when a young, pretty, exciting person comes around, there was going to be a fight because you are dead. Yes. So we have a lot in Ghana. Hidden affairs. Hidden affairs. It's like official wives with hidden things. Oh yes. Oh yes. That's where you see grown-ups. Bouncing grown-ups. <laughs> Hey. They are able to do anything. Yes. There are children here, so I don't have to say everything. <laughs> Ask your name, who are the children here? Are, are you the children here? <laughs> My message is entitled, Likely to be Rich. Unlikely to be poor. The last reason why a diligent person, oh, I'm telling you that there are four reasons. The last reason why a diligent person is likely to be rich. 
why a diligent person is likely to be rich is because a diligent person weaves his way, not he is weaving, not manipulates, finds himself standing in front of important people. Yes. You, you, by diligence, you appear. You appear at all the important places. Oh, yes. A diligent person just appears. Not manipulate. There are some people who they manipulate. I don't mean manipulation. Proverbs 22, verse 29. It says, Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. Mean men. Diligent in his business, not in a particular business. In his business. What business God gives you? I must be about my father's business. Whether it's ministry business. Whether it is singing business. Whether it is acting. Whether it is preaching business. Whether it is whatever you want to call it. Whatever the business. Seest thou a man who is like this. He's continuous and constant. And persistent in his hard work. It's just a matter of time. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You just find him. He will be standing in front of important people. No, you see, some of you are thinking, oh, if I had done politics, I would have stood in front of the president. I'd have stood in front of this president or that president. Now, I am far from being a politician. Very far. Oh, yes. Uh, There is no president in Ghana that is alive or that has been the recent and I have not been in the same room with. There's no president in in these recent times of life. Oh, yes. No matter the business, you do. You, you end up in places. You know, what is the name of this president? No, is it Noriega? The one that I went to in Nicaragua. Noriega? Yeah. I remember when, I, when they were escorting me. You know, his house is like in a... You know, they have leaves. The trees, you, you, can, you cannot see. I think for... Prote- security from the aerial view as they were escorting me through soldiers, this, 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 this I was wondering yes, as I sat there that's the president Noriega his wife sitting at the table we are talking I said wow from my shepherding work I'm sitting at the table. This is Benny Hinn. And and that that is me. From this shepherding work. Constant shepherding. Constant following children. Hmm? Constant following children. Are you not children? (laughs) What does it have to do with President Noriega? Or the President of Senegal? or the president of Namibia, or the president of any of these places. I was in the car once, I got a call from the president of Uganda that they are expecting me there. I said, well, I can't come, I'm going, I have to, I'm catching a flight. Oh, yes. I said, next time, I pray there will be a next time. Yes. Anyone who is constantly working, constantly hard work, no matter the job, whether politics, education, church work, prayer, anything, a 
a diligent man will stand before important people. You will see it happening over and over and over and over. Likely to be rich. Now, when you stand in front of important people, you'll be surprised that important person you're standing in front of may have, there may be something for you or some benefit for you for standing there. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Likely, likely to be rich. Yes. I was, I was in the president's house when it, I asked, what, what do you have here? And I said, he, he said, they should take us to the volcano to go and see a volcano. In, in the mountains. They opened the volcano especially for us in the night. Yeah. With a convoy. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Which country? Yes. One time I was leaving Senegal in the night. And the man was taking me to the plane around midnight, Air France. He took me alone. He didn't, he didn't want anybody to come. Nobody else can come. I, it was when I got to the plane that I understood why. When we got to the plane, pray for me. Oh, yes. Pray. Bless me. I bless him. And I climbed the stairs. Yes. Very important person. Ah, continuous shepherding. Following children. Following unimportant people, following nobodies, liking people, loving them, helping, praying for people. It, 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 it is a supernatural law that a hard, continuous working person, no matter the work the person is doing, will soon at a point be standing where there are important people. Look at the scripture. See as thou a man diligent in his business. Do you see anybody diligent in the business he has chosen? He will stand in front of him for that people. No matter whether a girl or a boy. Yeah. Likely to be rich. Likely. Don't forget, there are some people who are likely to be rich. And some are likely to be poor. So, when you are going to propose or some, a brother proposes to you, you see, you can apply this teaching to the person likely to be rich, likely to be poor. You can see even from a certain stage that this one is likely to be poor. This one is likely to be rich. Oh, yes. (laughs) Are you listening to me? Oh, yes. Listen very well. It's not just giving. It's diligence. Yes. Continuous. You see, I'm having give thyself holy com- type of conference. Continuous. This week I'm on. The next week I'm on. Oh yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. So may the Lord grant you the grace. To be hard working. Continuous. I think the key is the continuation in the hard work. Yes. It causes a person to prosper. Lift your holy hands. Father, thank you for the blessing of this amazing, likely to be rich, likely to be poor message. Bless us, O Lord. And touch us with the spirit of diligence in every area. Now, put your hands down. Likely to be rich in marriage, rich in love, rich in happiness. It it, it will be constant hard work, not hard work at the beginning. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Kenneth Hagin said, you have to look good to get him. You are going to have to look good to keep him.
The other day I read somebody wrote a book. He said, uh, not a book, in an article. He said, all men cheat. Yeah, that's what he was saying. God forbid you'll never be in that group. <laughs> but maybe m- more true would be all men have a tendency to cheat. A temptation to cheat. If you had to be spicy, flexible, gentle, full of delights, full of comforts at the beginning, and you turn into a statue of stone, of ice. Turn to the nearest queenly ice statue standing by you and say, are you an ice statue? Statue of ice. Where is your laughter? Statues don't laugh. Where is your smile? Statues don't smile. Wow. Father, thank you for the blessing of your word today. Guide us by your mighty, mighty Holy Spirit. Lead us into all truth. Lift your hand and just pray for a moment for the spirit of, the spirit of diligence. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Mandol Mashane, Mandol Mashane, Mandol Mashane. Mamanda Zamoli Mede, Le Manolam, Boleni Rolem, Masamadole, Paradabaco, Sale Badajamba. Pandol Mebe, Miro Landel, Medibo Shanala Mandali Baberede. Parmazana Mano Shibo Zedele Mandele Babara la Mandali Debe. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you praise. Father, touch our lives and let us be delivered from the spirit of laziness and slackness. In Jesus' name, receive the grace for diligence. Receive the grace for constant hard work. Receive the grace to persist in whatever God has called you to do. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. As every head is bowed for a moment, if you are here today, somebody invited you to church, you want to give your life to Jesus, I want to pray with you. Pastor, pray with me. I want God to save my life. God bless you. God bless you. I want Jesus to change me. Make me a new person. Maybe somebody invited you, but deep down in your heart, you know that you are far from God. But you want Jesus to change you, save you. I want to pray with you right now. If you are here like that, wherever you are, pastor, pray with me. I want to give my life to God. I want to be born again. I want Jesus to save me. And lift your hand like this. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. If you've lifted your hand, you want to give your heart to God today, come to me in the front from wherever you are standing. Just come. 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 Let me pray with you. Come right. Come from the back. Come from wherever you are. Come right now. Come quickly. I'm, I want to pray with you. Come unto Jesus. Come unto Jesus. Come unto Jesus. Give your life today. Come unto Jesus. Let him have his way. Come unto Jesus. Jesus. Let's all sing together. Come unto Jesus. Give him your life. 
Say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for my sins. I give my heart to you today. Wash me with the blood of Jesus. I receive Jesus as my Savior, my Master, and my Lord. Please write my name in the book of life. Say, Jesus, I love you. Wash me, cleanse me from all my sins. I receive Jesus as my Savior from today. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. I want you to follow the sign here. Follow me. Follow the follow me. All right? Follow, follow me right now. God bless you. Follow, follow me. Give the Lord a mighty clap offering. You may be seated. Take your holy communion. Every standing. Father, thank you for the holy communion. This is the bread which came down from heaven that a man might eat and not die as we partake of this amazing communion. May we experience your mighty healing. Receive healing. Receive a touch from God right now. Receive the power of God. This is my body which is broken for you. The body of Jesus Christ. blood. Whatever represents a mistake in your life. How many have made mistakes? Today, this is the supernatural omo, supernatural key soap, supernatural disinfectant that is sent from heaven to disinfect you of all your sins and mistakes. May the blood of Jesus speak for you cleanse you forever the blood of Jesus Christ now lift your hands for your blessing the Lord remember you and the Lord give you grace to be humble servant obedient servant and a diligent servant the blessing of the Lord rest upon you today and forever may God lift you up in your job especially in Jesus name I pray Amen you are blessed now, 